You join me inside the cabin of the 2021 Mercedes AMG GLS 63 4Matic Plus. This is an extreme vehicle, and I don't just mean all of the letters and numbers making up its name. It has 603 horsepower, three rows of seating, and the most sophisticated convenience technologies I've ever seen on a vehicle. So let's dive in, shall we? There's the big girl. I won't spend too much time on the exterior because there's so much to unpack on the interior of this vehicle. And that and the driving experience, I think are the most impressive parts of this vehicle. So I won't spend a ton of time out here. I will point out the AMG specific stuff that distinguish this from the GLS 580. And up here at the front, the first thing you're gonna notice is AMG's Panamericana grill. They put that on all their models. Here it is, absolutely giant, but it, it pulls it off with this being a three row full size SUV and you've got AMG's, sorry, Mercedes-Benz's crest smack dab in the middle, also huge. I mean, here's my hand for reference. I have a large size hand. It is the full size of this crest, so it's, it's just huge. And then you've got above that a more ornate Mercedes-Benz crest. LED headlights are standard, along with these LED daytime running lights. Nothing too fancy here but there's a little bit of artful work on the LED beams themselves. And down here, this is specific AMG stuff for this lower fascia, adequate cooling for that bi-turbo V8. No fake vents down there. Larger lower air dam. And then this has the AMG night package on this particular model. And that brings with it black touches for this lower bumper trim and the door mirrors and the roof rails and then the quad exhaust ports in the back and diffuser and I'll get there in a second. Here's your front angle view. Looks appropriately aggressive. And I'm gonna jump right into the wheels. These are the 23 inch matte black options and they're $4,950 extra. So you really have to love them. And I think they're good, but I think there are better options. For example, AMG offers their classic monoblock wheels, which look so good. And in a vehicle of this size, they would just be such a baller move. So if I'm gonna pay extra money for wheels, I'm gonna get those. And blacked out or you know just an alloy paint, not really sure, I'd probably, actually, I mean, if you're just gonna scream statement, I'd go chrome. I'm not a huge fan of chrome, but for something like this, part of the Russian mob, I'm gonna get my chrome monoblock wheels. We have flared wheel arches that are specific to the GLS 63, so you're not gonna find these on the 580. You can see them more, more pronounced in the back. The profile itself, I like. I think it's improved over the generations for the GLS. And on, you know, good sized wheels like this, it sits pretty. Less van-like, I think, than previous generations. That's probably what I like most about it. And then we get to the back here. And we see a couple things. One, Mercedes-Benz's latest LED light signature for the tail lights is here. They've got this on everything from, from the GLB up to this GLS. And they're kind of funky designs. I like them. AMG badging up there. This chrome strip runs from just above the tail light on the side of the car all the way across the tailgate and wraps around to the other side. GLS 63 badging. The night package brings more black trim from up here, and then black trim down here in the AMG specific diffuser. So super aggressive down here. And the trapezoidal exhausts, and they're not just finishers, those are actually four pipes in there. One, two, three, 
four. So genuine quad exhaust here. And the tailpipes themselves have the black finish around them too. Again, all part of that AMG night packaging. So yeah, it's a smooth, but especially with the AMG treatment, more, you know, confident exterior for the GLS 63. But as we'll see, compared to the interior, this is just ho-hum. Right, let's get inside this beast and see where the goods are. Pop it on. And like all modern Mercedes-Benz vehicles, we've got this twin fully digital display setup on what Mercedes-Benz calls a surfboard. I like the name for it. Basically just this continuous housing that looks super clean. And you've got your digital instrument cluster to the left and the infotainment to the right, both operating Mercedes-Benz's latest software. They call it MBUX, MBUX for short. And it's super cool, so much configuration you can do. And let me show you some of that. So on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we've got these smartphone style touch responsive controllers. You can press to click, swipe up, down, left, and right. And this way we can control the left gauge and the information that you would find within that. Swipe over and we can control the center bunch of different settings that you can adjust there. The right one stays the same. That's just going to be your tachometer. And then down below, you're going to see some of your settings for your active safety. This thing is loaded with active safety goodies, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alerts, automatic emergency braking. Uh, it'll even do steering assistance. It, it will basically drive itself on the highway is effectively what I'm saying. And now we go over to the right hand side and things get even better. So you can control it in a few different ways. I already showed you one of the ways. So this one controls that. The one on the right hand of the steering wheel controls this one. So you could do that or you can touch it because it is a touch screen. Or you can come on down here to this control pad, which is really just like a touch pad on a laptop. Functions the same way, is about as fast definitely is intuitive. So you can go into the navigation and you can see just how crisp the graphics are. Pinch and zoom like a smartphone. And then you can get over into your music. So mute that. And your comfort settings. So these seats are standard heated and ventilated and massaging function for these front two seats. And not just one massaging function. There's so many different massaging functions. So I'm gonna come up here and look at the different, we can have a hot relaxing back or shoulder massage, an activating massage, classic. I'm not even gonna go through all of them, but there, there's just so much you can do here. And they're long lasting and genuinely good massages. Ambient lighting, this is a fun one. This has 64 different ambient light choices. And this is difficult to show because it's during the daytime, but some of the ambient light will show up here at night. I'm gonna do a POV night drive in this so you can see the rest of it's across the dashboard there. And then some in here. Just so much adjustability, make you feel like a boss. Track pace, if you would ever jokingly take this on a racetrack, you got your telemetry data, you could do a drag race and see your times. We can count you down. And then you can do your laps. Comfort, sport, sport plus. And then if you go the other, other direction, you can get individual. And then a slippery condition, trail for when you don't take this off road, which you, you just won't and sand for also when you won't take this off-road. Fun telemetry data. See how much torque and power you're making. Laugh at how much fuel you're consuming. Watch your G going around the racetrack here. Get your G meter off to the left. Just fun little gauges. 
and then you can set up all of your active safety features here in the quick access or go in more depth with the other settings. So you see, as you can see, it's just so complex and you can do so much with it, but they've also found ways to make certain functions quick access, make them easier. And then your cameras, this will automatically park itself if you want it to, or you can just go into some of the other cameras. So front facing, front narrow, one at each wheel, so you don't scrape those 23 inch $5,000 wheels. Wide rear, narrow rear, narrow rear. <laughs> dual zone climate control up here, dual zone climate control back there. And then you slide this, a lot of piano black, but don't worry about scratching it because this is just gonna be open the whole time. You have your key, good looking, solid feel to it. But here's the best part of the vehicle, the whole vehicle in my book. And you know what I'm gonna say, it's the large water bottle test. And not only can you fit this in the door, which is already a huge win for, the, for, the, for me because this is quick access, you can fit it in the standard cup holder. In the everyday cup holder, you can fit your Nalgene size water bottle. That's such a win for me. I love it. And not just that, you could heat or cool whatever is in here too. And I should mention that it doesn't sacrifice your ability to hold smaller bottles because they just have these clever tabs. Why doesn't everyone do that? But yeah, heated and cooled front cup holders and this rear one, such a win. Wireless smartphone charging pad there. This is a Wi-Fi hotspot, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. All of your goodies. This is funny to me. So the theme of this car to me is excess, right? Excess in power, excess in luxury. There are four ways you can make the exhaust system louder. Four different ways, not four different settings of the exhaust. It only has a two stage exhaust. There are four ways to make the exhaust system louder. So let's go to the home and I'll show you that. So you can, in individual, you can configure it such that when you go into individual, it's kind of like BMW's M mode. You just press the button and it puts all your preferences there. You can have it such that it'll have the exhaust louder, or you can just go to sport plus mode and it will automatically make your exhaust system louder. I went the wrong direction. Keep doing this. And of course they don't just call it loud and louder. They call it balanced and powerful. Balanced, powerful. Then you have a setting over here just for the exhaust. Pull that tab down. Now your exhaust is powerful. And then there's one on the steering wheel. How many different ways do you need to literally just make your exhaust louder? It's such a baller move. This other toggle over here is for your AMG Dynamics. That's basically their sh your chassis responsiveness and the active anti-roll bars. You got your paddles up here to shift manually and then this controller down here will, will force the transmission to manual so it'll go all the way to redline and just sit there popping at redline, which I don't recommend you do. This car is way too expensive. Active air suspension so it will raise and lower, raise for the off-roading that you won't do again and lower because you want to lower it. It also, the air suspension is great for the rear so you can load cargo more easily. So many bells and whistles and just the quality of the materials is so good. This is a metal weave finish. This is like $400 extra. It looks really good. One thing that doesn't look so good, these seats and the accented leather. It's brown and black leather. Those are two colors that should not go together in a luxury cabin. This is, this is also just not a good shade of brown. Then you have what Mercedes-Benz calls Dynamica. It's Alcantara. Inserts for the seats. You have Dynamica on the steering wheel. This is a AMG specific steering wheel. It costs you 600 bucks extra. Everything's extra, if you can't tell. So let's hop in the rear seats. Burmeister sound system, I didn't mention this. So you standard, by standard, you get a Burmeister sound system, one of the best sound systems you can get in a car. I love their speaker covers too. This is the most intricate, awesome thing. Um, but this one has the high-end Burmeister sound system. And not just that, it has additional cabin insulation and 
acoustic front windshield film and these driver and passenger front windows film. So it's gonna be quiet in here and you're gonna have a kick and sound system. That's just a great combination. Huge panoramic sunroof. BT dubs. All right, so popping in the rear here. Again, the brown and black, awful combination. More of this metal weave finish in, in the doors. More of the awesome Burmester sound, sound system speaker covers there. And then you've got these cool little pods. They look like they're almost detachable. And you just take your, almost like, a, call those like sound boxes, boom boxes. God, I'm dating myself, boom boxes. Sound boxes that you can just take with you and wirelessly play your music. That looks like you could just grab them out. I wish you could, but you can't. And then this one has the executive rear seating package, which means that these rear seats aren't just leather with the Alcantara and the Ugly Brown. They're heated, ventilated, and they have massaging. And you have two zone climate control back here too. And two additional USB-C ports. So yeah, it's, it's a luxury vibe back here for sure. And as you can see, I have ample, ample leg room. So much of it. And really good headroom. And these are tinted rear windows. You can pay for additional sun shades back here. I don't think it's necessary. They're really darkly tinted. And the sunroof is darkly tinted as well. Down here, we have a 115 volt plug. Zoom in. Two USB-C ports. And here's the cool part of the executive package. You get this killer seven inch tablet, which you could leave in here and you can control all the stuff for the MBUX sound system. Also, there's a wireless smartphone charging pad and two more USB-C ports down there. But this tablet can also be removed if you want to be selfish and won't want to let your other passenger back here have it. Pushes it up so gently, so luxuriously. And now you can control this, including your massaging rear seats. You can do that too. You can set your media, your settings. You can use it as a remote control for that up there. Um, and then you could even, I think you can swipe up. Am I wrong? No, you press this button. Now you've got like Google search here now because it's a Google tablet. That's so cool. And then when you want to put it back, you just slide it into place and it just so artfully finds its way back flush with this center console area. So yeah, that's the executive rear seat package. Seating controls on the door, just like the front seats. That's Mercedes Benz signature thing. And now this is of course a three row SUV. It's the most powerful three row SUV you can buy. And so I'm just gonna pull that button and watch these rear seats come forward. The other theme of this vehicle, in addition to excess, is just that it's, it's lazy. You don't have to do anything mechanically. So I press the button and the seats go forward. If I want access to the third row, it's so easy because of how they tuck themselves really neatly in to that center console area there. I have a good size spot here for me to easily get access to the rear seats. As you can see, where that seat is, there wouldn't be much, pardon me, much leg room. But fortunately, that's not where that seat would stay if you were sitting back there, and I'll show you. So we'll hop back here. And not only did the seats go up automatically, but I'm gonna press this button and they're gonna go back automatically because you should not have to labor in the slightest. And now I'm sitting here going, please don't crush my legs, please don't crush my legs, but I have nothing to fear because Mercedes has set this up such that it's not gonna crush my legs. Not just that, I have like an inch of leg room, which is pretty good for a six foot tall adult. And not just that, I would even have leg room if I was sitting there. So three six foot tall adults, that's my seating position. I could fit there and I can fit back here. And I've got headroom. This is so impressive. And then I have two USB-C ports over here, two USB-C ports over here. So that's four. I already counted out two in this center console thing. So that's six, two more, 
in that thing up there, eight, nine in the front center console, 10, 11 for that section up there. 11 USB-C ports plus two wireless smartphone charging pads, one up there and one in the center console. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Are you charging all of the smart devices for your neighborhood? So you saw how easy it was to get in here. You'll see it's really easy to get out of here as well. And yes, I don't need that stupid sidestep. Unnecessary. My l only complaint about this is that I have to hold the button to make the seats go back. Because life's hard, right? Now let's go to the cargo, which is equally impressive. So not only do you have a good amount of space behind the third row here, but this is a false floor. So it's storing your cargo cover if you wanted to. You've got a big little pocket down there. Big little pocket, oh, that was oxymoronic. There's a big pocket under there to store other stuff. And then when you fold the seats flat, all of them, all the rows, you get 84.7 cubic feet of space. I will show you how that looks now. This is, okay, speaking of excess, this is how ridiculous this vehicle is and how little you have to do physically. There's a button that you press and all of the rows of seating, so it pops down these headrests. That uh, didn't pop down that one, didn't want to. Ah, oh, there you go, finally there. Go. All the seats are folded now. You can see there's so much space in the back of this truck, SUV, crossover, whatever you wanna call it. So much space. And then if I wanted to individually raise or lower a seat, I can do that because there are controls for each individual seat. The second row left, the second row right, the third row left, the third row right. That's how ridiculously intricate this vehicle is. So there you go. You've got cargo capacity, you've got the practicality, and then you have all of the luxuries you could ever want. And now it's time to go drive it. Let's do that. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I believe you in your 603 horsepower. This is the most powerful three-row SUV you can buy. Buy turbo V8, Mercedes speak for twin turbo V8, paired with a starter generator, 48 volt starter generator, they call EQ Boost. Together, they make 603 horsepower and 629 pound-feet of torque. And as I've just experienced, that is every bit as absurd as it sounds. Oh, oh and the noise is good too. Even though it's probably piped in through the speakers, a lot of it. Gosh, it's good. Zero to 60, 4.1 seconds in something that weighs just under 6,000 pounds. Top speed is 174 miles an hour. Don't expect me to test that one. I do test the zero to 60 every day I get behind the wheel of this though. <laughs> it is so much fun. Everything behind the wheel of this is fun. It is comfortable and that is enjoyable to me. And it is stupid, stupid fast. And the nine speed automatic transmission is really good. It downshifts quickly, gives you the power that you want. Oh, and that exhaust. I'm in Sport Plus right now, and so it's powerful as you can hear. Yeah, this is fun. I knew when I looked at the specs for this vehicle, I knew it would be silly, but it's silly not in a, why would they make this way? This is silly in a, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that they make this vehicle way. Because it is, it's just, you have so much fun every time you, you get behind the wheel. Going to the grocery store, doing this. Picking your kids up from school, doing this. <laughs> oh my gosh, laughing like a maniac doing this. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. 
and it's better than the GLS 580 for this specific reason. All the power it makes, all the theater it gives you. And yes, because of the adaptive air suspension, it's also really comfortable to drive. Not just the seats and all the nice convenience features, the ride quality is really good. And with this acoustic glass for the windshield, these front glass, it's quiet. And I feel every bit like I'm in a luxury vehicle, not like I'm punishing myself with a performance car. And on 23 inch wheels, for the ride quality to be this good, that's impressive for a suspension system. And that EQ Boost starter generator I mentioned, it does a few things. It's not just like a novelty, look what we can do thing, it actually works. So it fills in the gaps in power that are created by the turbos having to spool up. It just, it's like instant electric power like you would get from the Tesla Model X full on, you get little little jolt of that with EQ Boost. It's also activating the sort of house functions of the car when the engine is turned off. So start, stop, you're sitting at a stoplight, you got the AC going, you have the seats massaging. I get this out of Sport Plus because it gets a little firm. Not bad, but a little firm. I want to soften it up a bit. Um, so it's working all those things while the gas engine is turned off. So you don't have to crank that on and use gas. Just get to use the EQ boost. And then the kicker and the thing that makes this like really genuinely fun in corners. <laughs> is that uh, the EQ boost is also activating the anti roll bars, the electric anti roll bars. So basically how they work is like right now, I'm just in a straight line, I'm cruising along in comfort. The active anti-roll bars are just lax. But if I was to go into Sport Plus mode and really get on it in Canyon, it would trigger those anti-roll bars instantly, stiffen up, and so you're cornering much, much flatter with that rigidity that you need in your chassis. And they just work, they work so well. And having that turn on instantly because of the EQ boost is so cool. I love that they do that. So yeah, I, I mean, as a driving experience, this is, it's so fun and it's so expensive. Did I mention it's expensive? $133,000 to start, 133 grand. This one I'm testing right now is another $20,000 of options. So $153,000 and it's worth every freaking penny. And I don't say that about just expensive vehicles just for being expensive. I I have very few complaints and some of them can be easily remedied for this vehicle. Change the seat leather color. Don't do black and brown. Don't do it. Easy. Rip off the side uh, the uh, side steps. Do that. Uh, the other things. The exterior doesn't blow me away. Oh well, it's a three row SUV. If you want pure aggression, you're gonna have to get into like the coupe designs and that's not what this is about. This is about stupid power in a stupid large vehicle. So I, I don't have many other complaints. It's expensive, but it's worth it. If you are looking at other three row SUVs with lots of performance capability, you're looking at the BMW X7 M50i. That is arguably a bargain at starting just under $100,000, 99,600 to start and it makes 523 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque, so it's no slouch. Zero to 60 is about the same time as this, uh, at least according to Mercedes-Benz's spec of 4.1 seconds and BMW's uh, you know, uh, claim of 4.1 seconds. I don't know which would, which would actually be quicker in a drag race, but you know that, that X7 M50i, BMW went full on M, with the X7, we'd have a real a real challenge with this one. Then Mercedes AMG would come out with a GLS 63S, and then it would just be that whole game that they play. But the X7 starting at just under 100,000 is a real deal, and it's pretty darn luxurious. I took that one on a nice road trip and had a very comfortable drive, and then you get on the engine and it's just, it hauls. So that's a, that's a good one to cross shop with this. And then there's the Tesla Model X, P100D, and uh, that one's quicker to 60. 
you get that all electric power, so instant, instant torque. Zero to 60 is like 2.9 seconds, which is supercar territory. I mean, that's, that's so fast. And uh, I don't know what its top speed is. It's probably less than this for sure. And I just don't think it's as good looking as either this or the X7. And it doesn't have all of the like bred German breeding of luxury vehicles that this has. And so at that $139,000 starting figure for the Model X, I just don't think it can hang. Apart from the, you know, panache of driving a Tesla, who cares? You've got the panache of driving a Mercedes AMG. I think this blows the Tesla Model X out of the water. This is kind of the, the whole package for me. And I didn't even think I knew what the whole package was for a three-row SUV with 600 plus horsepower. But this is everything. It's satisfying any urge you would ever have as a driver with all of your passengers having a great time with you in comfort, the rear seat passengers getting their massage on and watching stuff on their tablet. This is so cool. And you know, maybe the kid in me is like, what are you doing old man? You're excited about a three row SUV. But the adult in me is like, yeah, I grow up dude. Like this is something I would want to drive my family in and have fun every day. And then you drive this to the racetrack. And then you get out of the car and you get into your race car and then you go race. There you go, kid in me. Yes, that is the Mercedes AMG GLS 63, 4Matic Plus, $153,000 as tested, but so worth every single penny. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna make the exhaust loud and do stupid things. <laughs> Maniacal laughs go with this. <laughs> oh, fudge. Oh, man. Doesn't get old.